Hi everyone! Today we're making really delicious keto vegan cauliflower fritters. So it's been a little while. I really miss you guys. Um, I've been taking a little bit of a break uh, from making videos. It's been an interesting time, and particularly during the lockdown, really strange time uh, in everybody's life. So for those of you who have written to me and slightly worried on how I was doing, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I've been well, I've been well. And uh, I'll share a little bit of what I've been up to in the past two months with the lockdown and everything. Um, maybe in another video. But today, we're cooking. So these cauliflower fritters, I've been so addicted to them. Um, I've been making almost weekly, sometimes a couple of times a week. They're so easy to make with simple ingredients, just like all my recipes. And to make it even better, I'm going to show you how to make my version of vegan tartar sauce to go with it. They're heavenly together. So let me show you how to make it. So the ingredients you need. So the first thing we need is cauliflower. So I've got a kind of small to medium sized cauliflower here. We're going to break it up in florets and cook it. This should make me about two cups of finely chopped cauliflower. And then we're going to add in some spring onions. So I've got about three stalks here. I love spring onions. I just add them in everything. And then we need some garlic. So I've got three cloves here. So depending on how much you like your garlic, I absolutely adore garlic. So I've got three, you can add more or less. It's up to you. And then to bind the whole thing together, we're going to use almond flour. So this is coarsely ground almond milk. It should be quite easy to get hold of. So this is not extra fine or anything like that. This is just ground almonds. And then we need some psyllium husk powder. So this is more sort of breadcrumbs kind of coarseness, but you can get really finely ground powder, psyllium husk as well. So these are the ingredients for the fritters. How simple is that? And then for the tartar sauce, we're going to use coconut yogurt as the base. So this one is so creamy and so nice. Um, I don't know whether you can get this brand from where you are, but if you can, uh, definitely get it. Because some coconut yogurt kind of tastes powdery and just weird. And this one I really love because it's just so creamy and thick. And in tartar sauce, we're going to add in gherkins. And this is where the fun begins. I mean, I love gherkins. I can just eat the whole jar. I do that frequently. We're going to have them finely chopped to go in the sauce and you'll add that crunch and sourness into our tartar sauce. And we're going to add a little bit of uh, vinegar as well. So I've got apple cider vinegar here. You can use any kind of vinegar you have in the cupboard. And then we're going to add in an avocado as well. This is going to make our tartar sauce a lot more substantial and also add in a wonderful avocado texture and flavor as well. And to garnish it, we have some chives here. And this is it. These are the ingredients for the tartar sauce. And uh, we just need some salt and pepper to season. So the first thing we want to do is to poach a cauliflower. So I've got some that's already been poached. You just break them up in small florets and then put them through water to cook for a few minutes. So what you don't want to do is overcook them. So you can see these florets, they still maintain that integrity. They don't just break apart. If you overcook them, they become mushy and it becomes waterlogged. It's just not very good eating. So make sure you cook them lightly and, uh, and leave them to cool. And now we're going to chop them finely with a food processor and add in the other ingredients. So now what we're going to do is to put our cauliflower into the food processor and chop them finely. So you can chop them by hand, but life is so much easier when you have a machine to help you. So we're going to use the food processor. So I'm gonna just pop my cauliflower in there. So this should make me about minimum two cups of chopped cauliflower. So this is the amount we need. Now pull a lid on and uh, let's chop away. And I'm going to add in my garlic as well. So I peel them, I'm going to just pop them in. You can add them from the start if you like. Let's look at the texture. So we want it quite fine, but not totally mushy. So there's still a little bit of bite into it. So I think this is about right. And then finally, we're going to just pop in our spring onion. And the reason we're adding the spring onion last is because I want the spring onion to be reasonably coarse and not too finely chopped. So I'm going to just pose it for a few times. Okay, I think we're done. 
And then if you want to do a whole lot in a food processor, you could, you just switch it to kind of a kind of a blender type of attachment. But I'm going to do it by hand from this point. So I've got my mixing bowl here and I also have my cauliflower mixture here. And I'm going to measure about two cups to go in my mixing bowl. Okay, so I've got about one cup here and then another cup. And then in the mixture, we're going to add in the flowers. So we're going to add in the almond flowers here. So it's two cups of finely chopped um, cauliflower. And then we're going to add in one cup of ground almonds, coarsely ground almonds. Goes in there. And then we're going to add in our psyllium husk. So this is about two tablespoons of psyllium husk powder. Goes in. And we're going to add in some seasoning, so some salt. You can taste the mixture and decide how much salt and pepper you need and some of black pepper and then we're going to just mix the whole thing together you can use a mixer that might work for you but i quite enjoy doing it by hand and just mix everything bind everything together and if you find for whatever reason if it doesn't bind together enough add a little bit more of psyllium husk powder a little bit at a time until the whole thing binds together. So to check if your mixture is ready, just grab hold of a small amount and roll it in your hands and try to make a patty shape into it. And if it holds together and doesn't fall apart, then it's good. So our mixture is ready. How easy is that? And now we're going to leave the cauliflower mixture to rest on the side for a few minutes and we're going to make the tartar sauce. So we're going to make the tartar sauce. And seriously, this sauce is a no-brainer. There's really not much we can do to break it. So the first thing we're going to do is add in our coconut milk yogurt. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at the creaminess of it. It's absolutely rich and silky and beautiful. So we're going to add in probably about three to four tablespoons. And the great thing about this sauce is you don't have to be precise at all. You can make any kind of quantity you want and probably combination, a ratio of ingredients you want. So I've just put in about probably four tablespoons and I might add more if I need more. So that's my coconut milk yogurt. And inside, we're going to um, add in the gherkins. So these are little whole ones and I just chop them up like these really small. I love these little gherkins, so I probably have about five or six of them chopped in small pieces. And our avocado, same thing, chop it really small. And uh, this is a whole avocado I'm going to add in here, generously. And I'm going to season it with uh, some salt. So again, you need to taste it to decide how much salt and pepper you want. I think I'm going to just add salt. I'm going to leave the pepper out and give it a quick mix. And then we're going to add in a small dash of apple cider vinegar. Again, you can use other vinegar if you want. I like the flavor of apple cider vinegar. Just a small dash. I'm going to be careful here. Probably just um, kind of a teaspoon. That's it. And you can use the amount of yogurt to adjust the thickness of the sauce you want. I mean, this looks pretty good to me. And guess what? It's done. I told you it was easy. Okay, now the sauce is done, let's fry the fritters. So I've got my fritter mixture here and it's been rested in, on the side for about uh, 10 minutes. We've got a frying pan here. We're going to add in some coconut oil. So a generous amount of coconut oil. And then we're going to turn the heat on. So the coconut oil will boost the fat content of the fritters, but also prevent them from sticking and it's very important. And we're going to uh, just grab a small amount of a mixture, just enough for a fritter, something like that. And then roll it in your hand. You can pre-made this if you want to, but um, I tend to make them on the go. And then just pat it down into a little uh, pancake shape and then place it on the frying pan. So that's number one. And then grab another one. And I'll recommend you don't make them too big or too thick because it would take a long time to cook through. I think three to four bite size is kind of perfect, I think. It depends on how big your bite is. And just move them around, make sure they don't stick. So you want to cook them in reasonably low heat so they have a chance to cook through properly. 
So we're going to cook them until the bottom side is kind of nice and golden brown before we flip them. I think you know it's ready to flip when you move them. They don't look like they're going to fall apart. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's beautiful. So that's fritter number one. Second one. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful golden brown. So this is where you want to be patient and leave them to cook. And if you want to make sure they cook through properly, you can just pull a lid on for a couple of minutes. This will make sure the center of the fritters are cooked through properly. Let's have a look. And let's flip them through again to make sure they're cooked properly on both sides. Right, I think our fritters are ready. It's lovely and golden brown on both sides. I can't wait to eat them. Okay, so let's plate up. Here's my little fritters that I fried earlier on. They're absolutely beautiful. I'm going to just light them up one by one like that. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, I think four is plenty. And I've got some rocket. So you can use salad leaves or any kind of salady vegetables. And then here's our tartar sauce on the side here. And finally, a sprinkle of this chopped chives. A bit on the sauce, and then a bit on our beautiful fritters. Well, so here we go. Here's our beautiful, beautiful cauliflower fritters and our homemade vegan tartar sauce. I mean, seriously, you can't beat this. So there you go. Here's our beautiful, beautiful cauliflower fritters with homemade tartar sauce. I can't wait to dig in. I'm hungry. Well, I could be really civilized and use my fork and knife, but I think I'm gonna use my hands today. Why not? Here you go, here's our little fritter. It's so lovely. And then here's our tartar sauce. Just dip in. A nice dip of the sauce. Look at that. So there you go, our little fritter. Mmm, oh, mmm. It's so good. It works so well with the tartar sauce. You've got that hint of vinegar from the creamy sauce, and then you've got the cauliflower, a little kick from the garlic, and a hint of spring onion as well. It's just beautiful. Double dip, but it's just me, it's okay. Mmm, the texture of the fritter is just perfect. It's got soft and creamy in the middle, and then it's slight crust on the outside. These will make perfect lunch or dinner. I mean, these are just so good. So what you want to do when they come out of frying pan is to leave them to rest a little bit. When they just fried, the texture is still quite soft. But if you leave them for about five minutes, they're still nice and warm, and, uh, but the texture firms up a little bit, and that's a perfect time to eat them. So I hope you liked today's recipe and we'll give it a go. Please give it a go, it's so good. And as I said, I had a little bit of a break in the past few weeks, but I'm back. And I have lots of recipes and content I want to share with you and keto tips, etc. And it's so rewarding to hear from you daily, even when I'm not making content, um, you guys are still uh, enjoying the videos, the recipes. It's just, it's just wonderful. And it makes me really, really happy. I want to do more. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Um, I share the food I eat and recipes from this channel. And a lot of you uh, tag me uh, on Instagram and share your creations um, using my recipes. And I love that. I love every single one of them. And you guys are so talented. And uh, you know, those creations are beautiful. So I'm looking forward to more of that. So thanks for hanging out with me today. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.